Hello everyone, welcome to another easy programming tutorial with C++. Today I bring you part 2 of C++ queues. This is the second out of the three parts that I plan on doing. And this is video number 32 in the whole easy programming series. Today I'll show you how to code queues. Um, we'll be doing this along. We will be using void functions, boolean functions, structs, basically how I did str um, stacks and we're going to continue this and then for the next video we'll include Q in the header here right under this and then I'll show you a shorter way of doing this uh, if you understood stacks Q's would not be that hard a lot of this function a lot of the functions are similar uh, some of them have different names but you can call them the old names like I explained in my first video so uh, let's get started you know on, the, on your screen you have a basic setup of what I usually have before I start out my programs uh, now you have include IO stream, include string, because we'll be using string, uh, using namespace standard and void main. Uh, you can also use int main, doesn't matter. Uh, not in this case, anyway. So the first thing we want to do is set up a struct just like we do, did with stacks. So we will do struct q type. Uh, well, the q type is the name of the struct. Open it. Cl uh, sorry. Oh close it just so you don't forget we'll have string and we'll enter name that part isn't done yet and we have I told you we have uh, an integer front and integer back a lot of books call this rear you can use that as well it's not a problem I also want to set up some kind of a, some kind of, uh, kind of a constant so const int max q this will be the maximum size of the q equals to 7 since this needs to be uh, an array, we're going to change this and put max q in there. There. So the uh, the longest line can be seven, just like we did with stacks during the first uh, in the second part of the video. And remember, when you have a struct, you should close it with a semicolon, just like a regular line. That's how a program interprets it. For this, we'll need a few the five functions that I showed you. There are actually six, you know, with the destroy queue, but we won't be using the destructor. We have void, create queue, queue type. We need to reference queue. You can call create queue anything, and again, you can call queue type anything. This is just the struct, the uh, name of the struct. We have boolean full queue, queue type, queue. We don't need to reference anything. You have bool empty queue. Q type Q and we have void and Q Q type into reference Q and we need to send back down string cause something called a new element you can call a new name you can you know you can call it anything you want these are just names and finally we have void DQ Q U E U E Q type Q. Yeah, I realize I spelled that wrong. And string uh, name out. This is what I'll be calling it. Uh, getting to reference this. Use a comma, and there we go. Uh, I'm using Visual Studio 2010. As you noticed, um, you know if it's not right, it underlines it before you even compile so it makes it easier to you know like to spot errors before you even start the program or run the program which is great so before we're on the main program now we defined our five functions three void two boolean and we're on the main program right now we need to uh, declare what variables we'll be using in the main program so we have q type uh, this is the name of the queue we'll call it students you know we'll enter students names We'll also need two strings, uh, new element and name out. You can call these two anything you want. They don't have to be the same as what you see in the functions here, since uh, they're since they'll be associated by location and not actual name. But I'm calling them the same so to avoid confusion. And we'll need char, char, character, quest. Short for question. That's when we'll ask the user whether he wants to input data or not. Uh, before going to the rest of the program, you need, you need to use a constructor. 
uh, we have create queue and that's what we're going to do create queue and you can um, send back the struct students we're sending back queue yeah there see wonderful visual studio now we need to ask the user if he wants to input data you know if he wants to input something to the line we'll just see out do you want to enter data y n put a space there and c n will take in quest and for this we we'll need to set up a while loop just like we did with stacks so while quest equal equal to lowercase y excuse me or while quest is equal to uppercase y and while it's not full q so we need exclamation point full q and what we'll be sending back is students Let's scroll that over students and you need a bunch of parentheses brackets to close it mm -hmm. that's about right and then when you go on the new line you open brackets you want to close brackets just so you don't forget the full queue um, is the function that checks to see whether the queue is full. So before we go on to what's going to be in the uh, for loop, let's do the full queue function uh, below here and get that over with. I'll show you what it does. Bool, right? We have full queue. Again, you can just copy and paste this from here. And that's what I'm going to do, actually. Save time full queue. It checks to see whether the queue is full. And last time I said, you know, if queue.front equals to queue.back plus one, or if it's one more than queue.back, then it'll return one. So we'll do if queue.front equals to queue.back plus one. Remember the parentheses because you want this equation to uh, happen before checking to see if queue.front equals to queue.back you know, I and then return one. Else return zero. Uh there may be something wrong with this too. Uh like Q dot back, what happens, you know, if Q dot back is seven and then you add one to it, it's going to go to eight, it's going to undermine the max Q. Uh it's an easy way to solve that. You use the modulus function or the modulus um uh equation and do max Q. Uh this this mod um, divides it, uh, divides whatever number, and gets the remainder. So bad explanation. It just gets the remainder, remainder, and once it goes back to zero, you know, once the remainder is zero, it goes around again. Uh, yep. Whoopsie daisy. Okay. Yeah. So boolean uh, full queue does. The next thing we need to do is see out. Ask if he wants to. I uh, know. Ask him to enter a name. You do C in, and this is where the new element comes in, and this is where we're putting the new the NQ function to use NQ students. Remember, we're sending back students. We're sending back new element, new element. Um, before we go to what the rest of this is, we're going to do what NQ NQ does. Actually, I forgot to do what create queue does. Of course, uh, before we do in queue, let's do the, what let's do what the constructor does. We'll do void create queue queue type queue open. I showed you that you know if q dot front equals to max q minus one. So when you do that, the value of the array will be six. and q dot rear back equals to max q minus one it'll equal to six. you can change this you can just let it equal to negative one um, it'll have the same effect so now let's do nq you have void nq again you can just copy this that's what i'll do to save some time half a second 
and what nq does it takes it increases the value of q dot back equals to q dot back mm -hmm, plus one max q we have the same effect here because again if it goes to six and you want it to go back down to zero it'll go back it'll increase to seven divide itself by max q which is seven and the remainder will be zero it'll just turn back it's turn back around and you're going to enter q dot name q dot back that's the array and you'll assign it new element the value of new element whatever that is <clears throat> that's what nq does it's similar to the stacks um, push and like I said when we do include when we include q uh, we'll be using push uh, that's the proper function built in uh, to uh, when you include q and we want to make sure we ask the user you know, if he wants to enter more values that's what a while loop does and if we're going to use full q again if not full q students if the q isn't full we will ask the user the same question here just copy and paste there you go yep. and this while loop is finished okay and we still have two more functions left and that's the empty queue and the DQ or the pop if you want to call it that so we have we need to set, set up another uh, while loop we have while not empty queue uh, remember we're sending back students again okay before we do what's inside the while loop I'll define empty queue uh, again just copy it from the header you can put these in any order you want it doesn't matter and again you can name them anything you want I'm calling them empty queue just to have a feel for it uh, and when we include queue you won't actually have um, boolean full queue or a full queue function uh, because the queue will be allowed to go on forever unless you know you have a destructor and you kill it uh, so we'll check to see you know, if q dot front equals to q dot back you know, return one like I said you know if q dot front is the same as q dot back just like we have in the constructor here like max q minus one max q minus one that means the q is empty it can be five and five it can be three and three it doesn't matter unlike stacks negative one doesn't mean it's empty or below zero doesn't mean it's empty you know else return zero so this will run whenever it returns false and then we'll do DQ DQ students and you have name out uh, we'll output name out C out name out and line We'll go down here, we'll do void dq, define the function, q type, q and string name out. Um, when we end queued, we change the value of q.back here, but when we dq, we're going to change the value of q.front because that's where we're removing from. Unlike stacks, we don't remove from the top all the time, we don't add to the top, we add to the back and we take out from the front. Let's do it. You do q dot front equals to q dot front plus one. We're going to use the modulus again. Do max q so that it rounds itself around again. Name out equals to q dot name uh, subscript q dot front, and that's the dq function. It'll assign name out. Uh, to whatever q dot front is, you know, if it's name q dot name subscript one or subscript two, it'll change it, send it back, and this is the entire um, coding of uh, queues. If you run it, it should run. Uh, like I said, um, Visual Studio 2010 make underlines anything that doesn't make sense before you even run the program. So let's debug it and see if it works.
taking a while. There we go. Uh, let's say this, do you want to enter data? I say yes. We'll do Michael. Yes, David. Yes, Charlie. Yes, Zulu. Uh, we'll do four names first, and we'll put no for this one. And there, it outputs it the same way you were put it in: Michael, David, Charlie, Zulu, presenter. You go. We'll do seven this time. We'll do Y. We'll do Mike. Y. Dave. Y. Charlie. Y. Zulu. Y. Delta. Y. Echo. Uh, is that seven? Yes, it is. And there, it doesn't like ask you anymore. You have Mike, Dave, Charlie, Zulu, Delta, Echo. It's just, uh, the six names actually. For this explains, you know, this breaks down what each of these functions do when we do use them uh, when we include Q in the header. And like I say, we won't be using NQ, we'll be using push, and we won't be using DQ, we'll be using pop, and we'll be using initialize Q here. Um, you know, this is the second part of the video, you know, coding C++ queues. I hope this explained a lot, you know, what you have to do. A lot of schools, you know, that teach C++, you know, break it down like this, at least where I've gone, um, before they go into queues, and I found that this helps a lot. I hope it helped you as well. Um, be sure to check back for the third part where I make it a lot shorter. It'll be a smaller video. It'll break down include queue. And thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe.